Welcome to part four of your Game Maker Beginner to Pro tutorial. I feel the need to repeat that we're not trying to create a bestseller game here. I know this looks really silly and kind of dumb, but it's intentional. You are learning the fundamentals of Game Maker and GML and some fundamentals of programming in general. So already if you take what you've learned in these last six videos and you uh, just use some creativity you can already make some really amazing games. You've learned about the different events. You've learned about how to make sprites and objects. You've learned about variables. Um, you've learned about alarms, which is a big thing. You're gonna be using those a lot. Uh, you've learned about if statements. Uh, you've learned how to put other objects in the game world. So what I'm saying is just what you've learned alone. Also collisions, you've learned about collisions too. Just what you've learned alone, if you take the principles in these last six videos and you put creativity into that, you can already make some pretty exciting games and some pretty fun games. So we're gonna keep going here because these tutorials are not over. This is beginner to pro. We're gonna get you really uh, going with this stuff and you're gonna be making some really beautiful games. Uh, but we're gonna keep going with what we have here, and in this video, we're gonna give our player WASD movement. So originally, in one of the first videos, we added movement by having four events, left, up, right, and down on the keyboard, and uh, we just made it to where it navigates our X and Y position with this little piece of code right here. Uh, we're gonna make our code more efficient, and we're gonna give WASD movement, so we're going to delete the keyboard uh, events here. So delete all four of these, and you might get this little error here, but don't worry about that. Just click reload. Sometimes if you go a little bit too fast, um, you'll get that. And I've been moving files around, so you actually might not get that. Okay, now that those are gone, go and do our step event. And a couple things I want to teach you. Now, again, I'm in object player. A few things I want to teach you. I'm going to get rid of this green text. That's comments. And you can use comments to your advantage. So especially when you have hundreds of lines of code, you kind of have to have comments to figure out where things are. So like you could do slash slash hit point system. That way, again, if you have a ton of stuff in your step event, this just kind of sticks out, which is kind of nice. Um, and we're going to do this. We're gonna say if keyboard check, uh, well yeah, just keyboard check, and then we're gonna put parentheses, and within those we're gonna say ORD, uh, and then we're gonna put more parentheses, then we're gonna put in that double quotations, and we're gonna say W. So this is to go up. <clears throat> so uh, basically whenever you want to call a letter, like W or J or M or whatever letter, uh, you use a keyboard check event, or I'm sorry, a keyboard check uh, function here in an if statement, and you gotta make sure you put this ORD, okay? And then in parentheses and, and double quotations, the letter you want to uh, utilize. So this is no different than using the arrow keys that we had in an event here. If you wanted to just use the arrow keys in an if statement instead of the ORDW, you would say VK under slash up or down or left or right, okay? VK, which stands for virtual keyboard, are things like, you know, the enter key, the space key, your F keys, you know, they're all listed right here. But if you wanna call a letter, it has to be ORD, parentheses, double quotations, and the letter that you want. And uh, I, don't, I don't have time to get into what ORD stands for, and it's, it just all has to do with how keyboards work, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click enter, we're gonna click tab, and we're gonna say Y, which is our up and down, space, minus equal, and then whatever speed we want, and we'll just say the number five for now, and then semicolon. Now, one thing I'll teach you about if statements is if you only have one line of code that you wanna run after an if statement, you do not need the curly braces like this. If you're only gonna run one thing, you don't need these. You only need these if you're gonna run more than one thing. So if we kept coding, then you need the curly braces. But if you only are gonna run one piece of code, you don't need it. You could still put it there, uh, but you don't need it. So like this hit point system, we put the curly braces, we actually don't need that. If all we're gonna do is destroy the instance, we don't have to put that there. So I just want you to keep that in mind. And sometimes that can be good just to keep your code kind of uh, you know, easy to read, compact, efficient, and all of that stuff. Now when we run the game, and when we click W, we're gonna move upwards. But of course, ASD doesn't work yet because we still gotta program that. Now, one thing I wanna do real quick is I wanna go to my create event 
and I'm going to add a new variable called player under slash speed, okay? And I'm gonna give that the value of uh, six, okay? So we're gonna replace that number five with just this variable player speed, okay? And when you create a variable, and this, this is gonna be our walking speed, okay? Uh, you could have one variable called walking speed, another one called running speed, and what you can do is when you're like holding shift, you could switch your speed to your running speed, which could be like higher than six, could be like nine, okay? A lot you can do with this, but it's good practice to use a variable for how, however fast you wanna walk, because that way you don't have to change the speed in every letter of WASD and all the if statements too. So go ahead and create that variable, go back to your step, and instead of five, we're gonna say player under slash speed. So it's gonna work just the same, except a little faster, because we were at five, now we're at six, all right? So whenever I wanna change how fast I walk, I go to my create event, I change this variable right here. All right, so you know what to do from here. Keyboard check, board, uh, A, double parentheses. Now, because we're going to the left, we're gonna say X minus equal player under slash speed. All right, and now we're gonna do if keyboard check, board, S. Now we're going down, so Y plus equal player under slash speed and lastly we go to the right boom now that's x plus equal player under slash speed there you have it now when we run the game we are we have wasd movement pretty cool right and uh you know we could do things like uh you know let's say uh you know right now in our space we have it to where we're damaging our hit points let's delete that and let's say player under slash speed equals 10, okay? And now whenever we click space, so let's say we're walking around and we're gonna click space, now we go even faster, right? Uh, so that's the kind of stuff you can do with variables. And then you could even say, okay, you can make an alarm. I'm just showing you something that's possible. So now we have an alarm, alarm one. We could say player speed equals six. Um, so then we can go back to space and under player speed equals 10, we can say alarm one equals 60, which should be like two seconds. And let's set, yeah, no, no, that's fine. So now when we click space, we're setting our speed to, t to 10. And in two seconds, alarm one, uh, we're gonna go back down to six, which is our original value in our create event. So you could do like a speed boost. So I'm walking around, I'm gonna click space, boom, I'm going faster. And then I go, I go back down at some point. It's hard to tell at six. Let's change it from six to uh, three, because that'll, so create event is three, and then alarm one is three. So now let's try it. Now we're gonna be walking slower, click space, now we're going super fast, and see, now I'm going slow again. That's the kind of stuff you could do. But you can make it to where if you collide with an object, right, um, like a, a speed boost object, the object destroys, your speed increases temporarily, and then, um, you know, then it goes back down in an alarm. Okay, so that's kind of the stuff you can do. There's your WSD movement, and that's all I got for you in this video. In the next video, we're going to give our gun ammunition and reloads and all of that. Thanks for watching.